Julia. Hi, Ruby. Ruby, are you okay? You're so cute. What's going on YouTube and welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, thank you for returning. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and share this video if you like what you see. Today we are going to be working on Ruby. She is a Brussels Griffon. This is her very first grooming ever. She is three years old and she has never been groomed before and they brought her in. They wanted a completely different change on her because they used to keep her long as you can see but now they want her cut short. Let's get into this video. When they brought her in, they explained to me that they still want to keep her beard long because Brussels, they do keep a long beard and he wanted around his her eyes cleaned really well as well as her face and shaved ears. They originally showed the person who checked her in for me the picture and then they sent me the picture. So I may or may not still have that. If I do, I will upload it at the end of the video so we can compare and see if I matched what they asked for. Just like always, we're going to be starting off with her prep work. We're going to be doing her paw pads, her nails, her sanitary, and then we're going to be working on her face. So her face has two mats in it right around her eyes. And because she is a Brussels, they have shorter snouts. Her snout is really, 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 really short. So it took me quite a bit to actually get her face like around her eyes cleaned out. I actually had to get another groomer's help because I could not get it on my own and you will see it was a struggle to get her face done and the reason why I had to do her face before I washed her because you know guys I'll usually wash them get the hair removed from her face or from their face scrub their face really good so it's easier for me to clean out the eyes well she had mats in front of each one of her eyes so I couldn't wash her face first. I had to shave it first and whew, it was a lot. <laughs> I will say for the most part, she was really good for the groom, for the bath, for the drying. She was really well behaved. It was just her nails and her face. She did not like it at all, <laughs> like at all. <laughs> So, but it was able to get done, just took a lot of work. The funny thing is we would make eye contact because I knew and she knew that I knew that she knew what she was doing. So when I would tell her, knock it off, she would look at me, she, okay, but then start back up again because she knew it wasn't hurting her, but she did not like it. I don't know that she's ever gotten her nails ground before. I'll say that she's probably gotten them clipped, but she's definitely got her nails done before because they weren't super long, but she did not like the filing process. She was okay enough for me to get it done where I didn't think she was overly stressed or stressed at all. She just was putting up a fight because she didn't like it. And when dogs flip and flail like this, I try not to put too much pressure on them where I'm holding them in a tight hold or anything like that because one they need to feel comforted in something that they're getting done that they don't like and two if you put too much pressure on a dog's body or even a small dog you you never know what you're doing so I try not to do anything most of the times I'll pick them up in my arm and hold their foot that way still hold their foot firmly but not squeeze it too hard where it's too much tension on them or anything like if they move too hard something something can happen so I try and be a little careful with that and kind of protect them in that way one thing I do want to say to <laughs> look at her just <laughs> 
One thing I want to say to new pet parents who are considering getting a dog or may have just gotten a dog, adopted a puppy, purchased a puppy, bring them in the grooming salon. Whether you want them to get a haircut or not, bring them in so they can get used to the process, so they can get used to things vibrating on their feet. They can get used to sharp tools being around their face. Even if you don't want a haircut, you don't have to get their haircut, but bring them in so they can experience it, so they can understand that it's not a bad thing, it's not hurting them, and so they can be okay with something that they're gonna have to get done their whole life. Don't wait until they're six or seven months or three or four years old to bring them into the grooming salon because then they will struggle like she struggles with things. Now, like I said, for the haircut process, you'll see when I start doing that, she did not do bad at all. But for simple things like her nails and working around her face, just bring them in we can just do like a light scissor around the face starting as puppies you know work with them <laughs> trying to figure it out and she one thing about small dogs they get out of everything everything there is like no right way to hold a really small dog because they can maneuver out of anything i was i actually used to work with this bather who did not like doing small dogs because she said she had big hands and she can't really hold them properly and she didn't want to hurt them so i understand that they're hard to hold because they get out of everything everything So now I'm going to be working on her face and as I stated before, I had to do her face before I washed her because she had mats in front of both of her eyes and because her snout is so close to her eyes, I had to one, get an e-collar to hold her paws down because she kept wrapping her little paws around my hands and you can grind a nail but if a dog is digging their nails into your skin, it hurts. Um, I also had to kind of like coax her into it as you can see I'm like putting the clippers in front of her face but I'm not actually rubbing the clippers on her face or cutting her hair because she has to get used to the sound in front of her face the sound in front of her eyes the clippers in front of her eyes and it just it took a long process but it was able to get done it just takes a while and then at one point I was like I can't do it because this because she's rolling around flipping around I had to like just hold her in one spot until I could get help because I didn't want her to hurt herself. Sometimes groomers, let me just say this, no groomer wants to be defeated by a dog. No groomer does. I can say that speaking for all groomers. You don't want to get defeated by a dog. A lot of groomers are like, the dog has to learn, which is very true. The dog has to learn. But if you can't get it done by yourself safely, bring somebody else in. I brought one of the groomers in so they could help me and she actually was able to get it done because she would not let me do it sometimes it takes a different person stepping in i've had to step in and help other groomers because the dog is fighting them for the whole thing and then when i step in they're perfect and i'm like wow I, and they're like i promise you she was fighting me for the whole thing and i'm like i believe you because i have dogs like that on my table sometimes you just have to have somebody else step in because just look at how easy she did it now that she stepped in and i was just like Okay, that's fair. <laughs> now, I blurred out her face for several reasons. The biggest reason she does not like to be on camera. Now, when it's just like in passing or something, if she's coming up to the computer, type something, anybody's coming up to the computer, just type something that's something different because they're not really in the camera but she's in direct focus of the camera so I wanted to blow out her face but I also wanted to try and keep some of the footage visible so y'all could see what she was doing and see how she's you know scooping out the face and then I was also rubbing her butt and I think that helped her as well I asked her for help because she is actually one of the best groomers in there and she's kind of like me like we can work with certain dogs like she gets a lot of bad dogs I get a lot of bad dogs no let me not say bad she gets a lot of difficult dogs and I get a lot of difficult dogs so I know she knows how to work with them just like I do so I called her in for help because I knew she'd be able to do it Now we're going to be doing her bath and then after her bath I pull her out for her haircut. There is a clip in here when I'm drying her. 
she has bumps on her back that I didn't see while I was doing her bath but I was able to see it while I was drying her I find that that's actually normal in dogs that have never been to the grooming salon before I don't know what it is but every dog that I've ever done that has never gotten groomed before professionally always have bumps along their back I don't know what that is maybe it's clogged hair follicles or I, I don't really know if y'all know please let me know in the comments what that could be um other groomers just in general if anybody knows please let me know because I have no idea what that is but I notice it a lot on dogs that have never been groomed before the reason why I think it has something to do with clogged hair follicles and that's why I said that is because dogs have natural oils in their coat and their skin and they have to be cleaned every now and again because sometimes all of that can build up on their skin and then their hair follicles and cause a lot of bacteria so that's why I assume that it is clogged hair follicles on why they have bumps like that on their back but it could be a number of things it could be allergies it, it really could be a number of things so if you know let me know So as you all know, I usually have a topic that I want to talk about while I am doing the voiceover for my grooming videos. And today I want to talk about allergies real quick. This is her back. That is what I was saying. I was like, what is going on? And I noticed that it's in every dog that, like I said, has never been groomed before. I don't understand what it is, but please let me know. Now, before we hop back into the topic, what I'm gonna be doing on her body is not half an inch. Now, for dogs that have this type of coat, like a wiry coat texture, I typically do reverse. So what I did on her body was an eight guard comb reverse because an eight guard comb reverse knocks down to a half an inch, which is a one guard comb. So again, I've said this in other videos, but I'll say it for the new people on the channel. If you are a new groomer to the channel, if you are a new subscriber to the channel and you wanna learn tips and tricks, when you are doing a reverse guard comb, or if you're trying to do a shorter length and you want to do a reverse guard comb or reverse blade, always go two steps up of what the length that the owner desires is because if you go one step up it's going to cut shorter than what the owner asked for so they showed me a picture so they didn't really have a length in mind so I kind of had to use my best judgment and in the picture it did look on the shorter side so the one guard comb I did that and they absolutely loved it excuse me not the one guard comb the a guard comb in reverse which again is equivalent to a one guard comb but just so you all know if you want to do this on your own i did an a guard comb in reverse now what i did for her legs i did not run the clippers on her legs because i knew she would not like it judging how she reacted when i did her nails i wasn't going to chance it because she's got little legs that's a big clipper i don't want anything to happen so i actually scissored her legs and then scissored around her feet because again i wanted to be safer as opposed to being quicker so for new groomers people who are trying to groom their dogs at home be safer as opposed to being quicker also if you're trying to groom your dogs at home i have equipment that i use in the description box i also have my updated dremel and everything which i did not use in this video because it's an old video i have a lot of old videos that i have to put out so that's what i'm working on right now and then there will be new videos out but be safer rather than quicker if you have to scissor those legs scissor those legs on a dog like this if you have a fluffier dog, it's a little different. You kind of have to clipper the legs down. So you want to go slow, introduce them to the clippers, rub the clippers on their legs so they can get used to their vibration and then just go slow clippering their legs. And then you should be able to maneuver your way through the rest of the groom. But let's get back into the topic. So what I want to talk about is dog allergies. And I know I've 
I know I did another video where I was talking about dog allergies, but this is going to be a little bit different. So I was reading this article and I can't quote it word for word because I don't remember exactly what it said, but I'll tell you just what the roundabout gist of what they were talking about. So in the article, it stated, if your dog has allergies, it is a less likely chance that it is a food allergy because that is the least common allergy for dogs now again that's not what they said verbatim but that is the gist of what they were saying they were saying that food allergies is the least common allergy in dogs that is so incorrect coming from somebody who's been working with dogs since 2010 food allergies is the biggest common allergy in dogs and when i say the biggest i mean the biggest because chicken and grain is the biggest common allergy in dogs so how can it not be a food allergy dogs are more prone to having reaction to grain because it builds up yeast in their body and chicken something about chicken i don't understand for people who have dogs that have constant ear infections and you put chicken in their diet take the chicken out and see if this stops the ear infections because I have seen that so many times. So many people have dogs that come in with their feet all swelled up, their ears are all almost swollen shut, and it's because of an allergy. Nine times out of 10, if you adjust their food, let me not say nine times out of 10, because that's about 90%. I'm gonna say seven to eight times out of 10. If you adjust their food, change their diet, you will see those allergies diminish. They will diminish. Now, the reason why I say that is because when your dogs are on a healthier diet and on a diet of what they're supposed to eat, they are the healthiest that they are supposed to be. So if you do home cooked meals or if you do raw diets, or if you do just a really high quality dry dog food, they're gonna be the healthiest they've ever been. Now, with that being said, even on a high quality dry dog food, the way the food is processed in the factories and different things that they put in there to preserve the food can cause an allergic reaction, can cause allergies in dogs, can cause health concerns in dogs, but if, if you're putting them on a fresh diet, those issues are very, very limited. Almost down to none. And I say almost down to none because I can't guarantee anything. I am a person who believes that nothing is guaranteed. You can never predict what's going to happen. You can never predict that this is gonna be perfect for my dog. This is gonna be perfect for me. I'm never gonna have any issues. You can never predict that. So even though I know that raw diets and cooked diets are really good for your dog and they have your dog live the healthiest life that they possibly can, I can't guarantee that they will always be healthy and stay healthy and nothing will ever happen. Nobody can guarantee that. A vet can't guarantee that. But there are customers that come in and tell us that their dog is on a raw diet. Like I'll talk to customers who come in like this one guy, he came in with his Roddy. His Roddy had to be about seven years old. I'm pretty sure it was seven years old. And his teeth look perfect. Now on a Roddy, on any dog that's seven years old, they have some sort of tartar on their teeth. He had none. His teeth looked phenomenal. And I said, wow, his, his teeth look really good. He has a really nice coat. He said, well, I home make his food. Now, one thing about home making the food for your dogs, they're not crunching or biting on anything. Most of the time they kind of swallow it whole, which is not a great thing, but it's not a bad thing. So when they're not biting on kibble, dry kibble, it's not being stuck to their teeth. It's not building plaque on their teeth. I switched my older dog to a homemade diet last year. 
he got his teeth cleaned because he had an infected tooth he got on antibiotics this was when he was on dry food he had the infected tooth had heavy tartar got his teeth cleaned switched his diet as soon as they told me about the heart murmur his teeth look great well as great as they could be for him being on dry food for years but the tartar on his teeth is like existing to none no more infected teeth i also brush his teeth but i don't brush them i don't brush them every night but i try and brush them at least like four times a week but even with brushing teeth that i've learned tartar will still build up because they're still crunching down on that food his teeth look great he's great his energy everything is great about him i also noticed when he eats dry food he is extremely thirsty all the time all the time he's thirsty he'll sit there and drink a whole bowl of water but when he's on his homemade diet he's he's great he'll he'll still drink water he just won't drink the whole bowl because he's not as dehydrated as the dry food i'm telling you guys get your dogs off that dry food do your own research actually do your own research if i'm one of your researches research sources okay i appreciate that but also do your own research do heavy research i'm telling you there is a huge benefit to your dogs having a homemade diet another example there was a customer that came in with his french bulldog just to get his nails done and he also has a pit bull at home he breeds pit bulls and we got to talking about his frenchie's allergies because he had severe allergies his frenchie went into cardiac arrest his heart stopped the vet resuscitated him it was just a lot because of how bad his allergies are and other health issues because frenchies can be prone to a lot of health issues but nevertheless so his pit bull is on a raw diet and his Frenchie is on a vet prescription diet and he said that since he's been on the vet prescription diet he has not seen a difference in his dog's allergies he they still flare up he still has bald patches on his body and he struggles with him and with his allergies because his allergies are not being catered to now his pit bull is on a raw diet and he told me that the vet told him not to be on a raw diet because a raw diet is bad for them and he said well explain why my pit bull is in perfect health no health issues and my dog that's on your vet prescription diet dry food is in terrible health you can't that there the research proves it that's why i tell everybody do your own research the information is out there if your dog struggles with allergies do the research i have a video up on my page as soon as you go on my page it's right up at the top about homemade dog food i'm actually going to update that video because i switched up their diet and i'm also going to put on there how i make some of their homemade dog treats so y'all let me know in the comments if y'all want me to do it because i could definitely do it i am down to making more of his food anyway and i need to make more treats anyway so y'all let me know in the comments if y'all want me to do it i am super open to it i have time a lot of time on my hands these days <laughs> so y'all let me know oh my god look how cute she looks oh she's so tiny okay guys but that is the end of this video we're going to do a quick flashback of what she looked like this is miss ruby's before and now this is ruby's after look at how pretty she looks that is a drastic change from what she looked like before y'all make sure y'all hit that like button subscribe button and share this video if you like what you see i will catch you all in the next video